Alex, well, okay, let's say he's going to be there next season. What does this? Is this a good news for La Liga? It's great news for Real Madrid, of course. You know, if you have, if you can add Mbappe to the squad that you already have. Is it good news for La Liga? Because it looks to me that it's going to make this Real Madrid team pretty much, what, potentially unbeatable when Barca are sinking or certainly looking like they're going to sink. Where Atletico Madrid are good, but the Atletico Madrid and soon Griezmann will be too old to perform well. And there might be a time where El Cholo decides to leave as well. So is this a good news for La Liga? And I guess great news for Real Madrid, of course. I'm firmly of the opinion this is fantastic news for the, for the league. What does the league want above all? You want the best players playing in your league. You want the most high-profile players. You want the biggest names. You want to better sell La Liga as the destination for the best players in the world. And that's something that after Cristiano Ronaldo left, after Messi left, it was harder for La Liga to, to do that. Now, we saw that a little bit with Jude Bellingham last summer. That was a big deal. But this is Mbappe. This is another level. Even though Bellingham's been amazing, it's a big deal to have an England star like that here. Mbappe at his peak, choosing to come to, to La Liga when he could go and play anywhere that he wants, whether it's staying at PSG or going to the Premier League, I think it's massive for La Liga. Now, is there, yes, is there a kind of a subsequent potential issue about Real Madrid simply being too strong compared to their rivals? I mean, we've seen that even without Mbappe, right? In recent weeks, their closest rivals in La Liga this season have been Girona and they thumped Girona 4-0 the other, the other week and they're six points clear at the top of the table. Yes, potentially, but it's never quite that straightforward. How many times have we seen in the past that having all the best players doesn't necessarily guarantee you success? Just look at Real Madrid's own history in the 21st century. Look back at the Galactico era, for example, of a collection of the best players that didn't necessarily guarantee uh, success domestically. Quite the opposite, in fact. So it's not quite as straightforward a straightforward a ratio between sign the best players and win everything. We know that. I think fundamentally it's fantastic news for the, uh, for the league and, and for, for Real Madrid's and for the Real Madrid dressing room, the players, all of them, I guarantee, they are so excited about playing with Kylian Mbappe. The best players want to play with the best players. Whatever people might say about oh, what does this mean for Vinicius Jr., what does it mean for Bellingham, or even someone like Rodrigo, who might be more seriously affected. The bottom line is the best players want to play with the best players, and they cannot wait for Mbappe to be. But at the same time, Jules, Alex, I think that it's a bit tricky, a bit dangerous for La Liga to... Uh, I mean, when you see Mbappé joining Real Madrid and you see the squad that Real Madrid will have next year, we're talking about Camavinga, Chouamini, Mbappé, Hendrik, who's coming this summer for uh, Real Madrid too, Vinicius. I mean, Real Madrid now is, is about to have maybe the best squad in the world. And it's a bit dangerous because it will depend on who will be coaching Barcelona next year. Because at the end of the day, it's like, okay, Real Madrid, they have a super team, Galacticos' uh, new era, let's going to call this way. But now, what will happen to Barcelona? I mean, because that risk that, uh, that Real Madrid or even La Liga are taking is that, okay, maybe, maybe La Liga, Spanish La Liga, is going to become the new French league in order that Real Madrid are going to be the team that are going to win the whole tournaments every single year until those financial issues allow Barcelona to compete against Real Madrid. Because nowadays, uh, Barcelona are lower in the table and are low in potential in financial uh, situation, uh, you know, if you compare Barcelona to Real Madrid. So that is why it's a bit tricky, a bit dangerous too at the same time that uh, Mbappe, Johnny and Real Madrid are going to make Real Madrid the best team in the world. But Barcelona are able to compete and to fight against that Real Madrid? That's why, you know, that question is on the air. I guess there's two questions there, right? We can maybe separate them. There's about the competitiveness of the league yeah, and about yeah. sort of the commercial success and the commercial yeah. value of the league. Commercially and brand-wise, it's amazing to have yeah. you know, the best player in the world or maybe the next best player in the world if you want to be to be here. Yeah, competitiveness-wise, that, that may be a concern. Yeah, I think you, you both make great points on the competitive side of the league and also how much... How, how much it would bring to La Liga to have Mbappé in, in terms of exposure and sponsorship. I mean, I think Javier Tebas, who clearly hates Real Madrid and Florentino Perez, the only good thing that has brought Real Madrid and Florentino Perez to Javier Tebas right now is Kylian Mbappé. There was somebody told me a really good story I thought the other day uh, because Kylian speaks really good Spanish already. And some, for some yeah. people, you think like... Better than me. <laughs> yeah, maybe better than you already, yeah. And uh, and when he was learning at school, because he's, this got, come only from school and then, of course, talking Spanish within the dressing room, you know, PhD. But the idea for Spanish was that he would tell his parents, 
I will be able to speak Spanish for the day I'm unveiled as a Real Madrid player at the Bernabeu. And we imagine like a kid at 10, 11, 12, going to secondary school or even primary school, uh, then, then through, through while playing football, that in the back of his mind, the only reason why he wanted to do well in Spanish lessons at school was for the day he would be unveiled as a Real Madrid player. And I just think like, okay, we can find him maybe arrogant. We can find him, you know, he's got loads of flaws. He's not perfect by far. But I just love the drive and ambition that he must have had since a very young age. Just in the fact that he learned Spanish at some point to be able to speak in Spanish for his press conference as a new Real Madrid player. And let's see if we get that big presentation at the Bernabeu as well, because in recent years, because the Bernabeu has been under construction, of course, we haven't had that. Even someone like Bellingham was presented behind closed doors at the training That's rack. True, yeah. but, but, but the Bernabeu is almost finished now. It's yeah. almost finished. We still don't have a date. The club have been reluctant to say exactly when, but it's almost done. And so potentially this summer, I'm not sure what people have told you, Roger, but they might open the doors of the new stadium and they'll be thinking about, remember, 15 years ago, 2009, Cristiano Ronaldo filled the stadium for his presentation. It was, what, 85,000 fans. Can they look to match that with Mbappé? Because that's sort of the precedent right, the precedent right now in terms of the biggest player presentation ever is, is that one. They have already prepared, you know, the red carpet for Kylian Mbappé. They're trying to see everything, to have everything under, you know... Uh, <laughs> Care of the maximum detail, so you know everything is ready for killing Mbappe to arrive to Santiago Bernabeu.